a factor in the last fight that we showed you here on HBO, that between Larry Holmes and Michael Spinks. Round one, Mike Tyson right on top of Mitch Green. Just as expected, uh, Mike Tyson comes out like a locomotive, going straight for Mitch Green. Green, uh, what he's going to have to do to be successful is to box. Pretty much do the same thing uh, a boxer should do to a, a puncher. Keep that jab in his face and not be intimidated on, by his puncher power. Mike Tyson and his corner man, Kevin Rooney, his trainer, were not real pleased with the Tillis fight because they said, both of them said, that he didn't double up. He just was a little bit lazy, especially in the later rounds. So we'll see what he does about that against Mitch Green. Well, Mike Tyson told me the fact that he was somewhat uh, a little reluctant to go full steam because he was going 10 rounds. I had the same experience when I fought my first 10 round in Baltimore against Rafael Rodriguez Barry. It's, it's in your mind, you know, the fact that can you go additional two rounds. But being conditioned like Tyson, there is no major problem. Heavy-handed fighter. They say heavy-handed like George Foreman, but much faster than George Foreman. And just kind of getting over the butterflies of the first round. And he has them. He told us he definitely has a fear when he climbs into the ring. He says, I think any normal human being who says they're not afraid, not nervous when they get in a boxing ring is either crazy or lying. What is your adrenaline? It's that anticipation of facing uh, your opposition, uh, knowing that he's capable, and the fact the crowd here who will definitely fool up Mike Tyson. And he, of course, will be quick to credit Customato with his overcoming that fear and that nervousness. In fact, he credits Customato with his career, period. It's a story that has been told many times, and we'll develop it as this evening goes on. Well, Mr. Green is complaining about the, uh, the head of Mike Tyson. You see what's happening? Tyson is not allowing Mitch Green to punch. He's standing right in his chest. He's smothering his punches, staying close to his punch, staying close to his opponent. It's similar to Joe Frazier. Always aggressive, right in front of his man. Now we see some hand movement by Mike Tyson. That was about a three-punch combination by Mitch Green, Ray. But once again, it looks like Green is off balance when he throws his punches. Well, the mistake that Mitch Green makes is the fact that he doesn't coordinate his, his fist. He's slapping his punches. And uh, you have to make a guy like Mike Tyson respect you. Have to get those punches in and get him in shop. That's the uppercut that was... Um, that was working for Quick Tillers. Remember, this is only the first round. It's a very up-tempo first round. Good uppercut there by Tyson. And shots to the body. Another thing that uh, Rich Green is doing, he's trying to tie up Mike Tyson. He's not doing too, too good of a job. Now. He can't allow Tyson to get inside and work his body. Because in doing so, those body shots slows down your uh, maneuverability. Just have a little bit more. We're ready to tap them. That's where you come back. Punch my head. How do you feel? Great. All right. Give me a little water. No sip. Come on, boy. There you go. Spit it out. Spit it out. Here you'll see after the bell. Right there. That last punch. A, a grazing punch. Even. Youngster. Oh. But when he get inside, tie his arms up. Tie him up when he get inside. Like this. Let's go. Double the jab straight right hand. Keep that steady pressure. Tyson's late mentor, Customato, taught what has been called the peekaboo style. Holding the gloves up close to the face while you're coming forward. He wanted his fighters to be entertaining and aggressive, but not to lead with their chins. And you'll see that that's what Tyson tries to do. The tactics that Mr. Green wanted to use was to tie his man up once he gets inside to stop him from punching and work to the body. He's not been successful mainly because he's not tying his man up right. Got to grab those arms. You heard Mitch Green's corner tell him, tie him up in there. Incidentally, the peekaboo style of Mike Tyson is different than that of some of Customato's former pupils. I'm sure Larry Merchant will talk a little more about that, but his gloves are actually down around his chin rather than up on his cheeks. What, I, what I'm looking forward to seeing, whether or not uh, the, this clinching by Mitch Green is going to frustrate Tyson because it has a tendency to really uh, frustrate a fighter. 
Good left hand by Tyson. Green got a couple of punches in, but as far as how solid those punches are, there's no comparison. Now Green holding and hitting. He, in fact, he should get a warning here from Miss Green from holding behind the head. See, and again, Ray, it just strikes me that Mitch Green throws an awful lot of punches off his back foot, which it seems would just take away all the sting. Well, also, he, he, Mitch Green makes him, has a bad habit of leaning back. Watch the left hook of Mike Tyson land. Every time Mitch Green moves backwards, he has to keep those hands high. He shouldn't be inside with a fight like Mike Tyson. Tyson's arms are shorter, so he's able to throw quicker shots. There's the left hook I was talking about. Those short shots, Barry, are very effective. On, go, the other thing that strikes me, Ray, is that Mike Tyson just seems to be right on top of his man before his opponent even gets a chance to take a breath. Well, he, st he stays right in his opponent's chest because what happens by him being so close, it compensates for his height, the disadvantage. You notice that there is no mouthpiece in Mitch Green's mouth. He was knocked out by a left hook. Green needs to keep that mouth shut. To Green's credit, he hasn't taken a backward step. Whether that's wise or not remains to be seen. You know, it's time and time again, that left hook and those little short shots. Very effective shots. This is not the type of fight that Miss Green want to have. All right, break. Come on, break. Stop back. I told you, stop holding them punch, man. And he did draw a warning from Luis Rivera, the referee, about holding. Green's in trouble. Those shots to the body is doing it, taking his toe. He's really working. A lot of body, a lot of leverage. The body shots. Watch for the left hook. There it is again, Barry. As advertised, it's inside of 10 seconds. That hook is getting shorter, more powerful, and more effective. The uppercut's working beautiful for Mike Tyson also. That was a good round for Mike Tyson. Very impressive round. Getting all of his shoulders into every shot, it seems. Tie the man up when you get inside. You ain't got to punch inside. Tie him up. You understand? Throw the one, two from the outside and tie him up. One, two, tie him up. Don't fight him inside. You don't have to fight him inside. Tie him up. One, two, jab and jab. Move this round. Move this round. When you get inside. Look, stop fighting this fight. Move this round, throw the one, two, okay. and tie him up. All right. That's you understand? Give me five. Blood. That's Give me this. Blood. Get him on the outside. Hold on. And when he get inside, tie him up. Oh, how you feel? Okay. okay, keep up. Keep the pressure on. Just keep moving. Just, just keep moving like that. Stay right on him and keep punching on the inside. You're doing excellent, baby. Real good. Let's go. Come on, Dale. When Blood Green was a gang leader, they say he had over 100 men in his gang. Right now, he needs some of them. And again, Mike Tyson bolting out of his corner right on top of Mitch Green. Tyson is so much physically stronger than Mitch Green, and he's using it to his advantage. Mitch Green is doing the wrong thing. He's fighting Mike Tyson's fight, trying to fight him inside, trying to exchange punch for punch. He can't do that. Tyson's far too strong for Mitch Green to fight that way. He needs, Mitch Green needs to get outside, work his jab, and attempt to outmaneuver Michael Tyson. That's exactly what Green's corner. Green has been bleeding from inside the mouth. And I can't help but wonder if maybe he might not have suffered some jaw problems when he lost his mouthpiece in that last round. When his mouthpiece was knocked out of his mouth, he kept his mouth open. Again, Barry, you have to watch these little short shots thrown by Mike Tyson. It's very, very effective. And inside, it can do a great deal of damage to the mouth. You know, the last fight that... Tyson had against Tillis, and what a shot! That is an awesome shot. That was just a jab. You have to appreciate one left jab, and the mouthpiece is gone once again. Started to say Tyson and his people weren't happy about the fact that he had a hand, a hand free in a situation just like this against Tillis, and he didn't take advantage of it. But is he doing that tonight? Well, the problem he's making, he cannot um, keep Mike Tyson off of him. Those little inside shots is really busting up the mouth of Mike uh, Mitch Green. I'm sorry. Yeah, there was blood inside the mouth even between rounds, as we mentioned. It can't help it. He's breathing through his mouth. Barry, watch the left hook. The left hook is doing a great deal of damage. Come on, step back. Come on, do your work. Man. It's inside. It's short. Less than six inches. Even 
even the uppercut of Mike Tyson has been effective. That was a right hand at the top of the head. Green breathing through his mouth. Tyson keeps that, that chin tucked in. So it's difficult to hit him on the, on the chin. Hands high. He works his way in. That was a right hook. The man possessed so, so much power, he has dynamite in both hands. It really is impressive. And whatever punch that he's able to land against Mitch, it has a tendency to shake Mitch up. Those big broad shoulders, big arms. You see the exposed area to the body. You have to think, Ray, that maybe the Tillis fight woke him up. Well, it reassured him that he is a conditioned athlete. He can go 10 rounds, so there's no need for him to slow down the momentum. Both hands. Go! It's obvious that Mitch Green just doesn't use the body he has. He's tall, he's got a long reach, but he doesn't use it. Come on, doing excellent, but you can't move. He's holding it up. I know he's holding it. You keep the hand, that's free. You just keep on it. Dig in, get me in. Keep the meanest in there. Keep the meanest in there. Now here we see why the, the, the mouthpiece come out with that left jab and in fact why it's so difficult for Green to move because Tyson looks quick in there and he looks like he surrounds him and here's the card of our official unofficial judge Harold Letterman Larry so far Mike Tyson is awesome he, he swept the first three rounds with clean hard effective punches uh, he's staying right in Green's chest he's just running away with it so far Oh, yeah, Mike Tyson is <laughs> anxious to get to work. I just want to mention one other thing, too, and that is that it wasn't only the mouthpiece that Mitch Green lost. We have a production assistant over on the other side of the ring. Mom said in addition to his mouthpiece, it was a bridge with a couple of teeth in it. That'll just give you an idea of how tough Mike Tyson is. Mike Tyson, in this ring, he's at home. I mean, he fights with so much authority, so much confidence, so much break. determination. Come on, step back and say break. Say break. I'm going to get that point for you if you keep on holding. If you want to the referee the right, now is warning uh, Mitch Green for holding. Second time he has warned Green. Now, Green scored with a right hand, and it didn't slow Tyson up a bit. Now, Tyson's doing what he didn't do against Quick Tillis. You notice when, when he's tied up, he still let works let the let uh, go, free hand. Let go. Let go. He didn't let do that let against Quick Tillis. Good left hook, solid left hook. Green cannot continue to take these type of shots. It's going to slow him down. It's going to take his toe. Working the body once again, Mike Tyson with that free hand. The last time we saw Mitch Green in a preliminary fight go, go, on the Touch Witherspoon card, right? Lost his mouthpiece nine don't, times. Don't go, don't go. Is that any sort of indicative of anything in particular? A lot of times it's fatigue and also it's a way uh, that fighters get a breather. Left hand, top of the head. All right, break. Come on, a lot of good times because of the damage that's done to a person's nose, they have to breathe through the mouth so they get rid of their mouthpiece. It's not a smart thing to do because their mouthpiece protects you from a broken jaw. Green now waving over to his corner to let him know that he's okay. But instead of dropping that right hand and the left hook of, of uh, Mike Tyson is very, very fast. That was another big shot right there by Tyson. Right, come on, let it go, let it go. Very good, very good. You notice that uh, Tyson walks in, keeps those hands high. He's a very unorthodox fighter who punches with both hands, and which makes him a quite a difficult target. Yeah, in fact, that's what he says. When we asked, I asked him yesterday what his best weapon was, and he said, my elusiveness. He has said nothing about his punching power. He said, I'm elusive. That's what I do best. And very, he's quick. I mean, his hands are faster than people expect or think. Now, see, this is... This is how I got knocked down by Kevin Howell by moving around too much. You gotta slow down a little bit. When you get lateral movement, you don't need your excellent exactly run. Just move from side to side and stick the jab, but snap it. You gotta draw it back quick. Inside of 10 seconds. 
a free hand to the body. And that's something that he did not do against Quick come on, Tennis. Come on. Yo, 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 yo. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, bat. Come on. Come on, come on. They don't have any bells on the street corners. Box a little bit. Yeah, for holding. Now listen. Use your jab. Box a little bit. Snap the hard jab out. Snap out. You understand what I'm saying? Let me get one. Sit two more feet on there. You want to keep that pressure on? Okay. You still got to use your jab more coming in, then. You understand? Take that. Take that. You got that mouthpiece, right? Okay. There you see. That's your turn. Amendment this number of body punches for a fighter to have thrown and landed in just four rounds. Stay cool. You don't miss him with your jab. Every time you throw it, which is occasionally, you don't miss it. Now, bounce something now. Use your jab. Stay Get off first. Deep breath. One, two. Go back out. Move, blood. Move. move. There you see that Mitch Green really isn't taking advantage of his longer reach. His jab. Incidentally, although it's not that important, since Tyson won the last round anyway, the referee took the round from Green for holding. Just a second ago, uh, Mitch Green got a little upset with the referee. I guess the referee was trying to warn him for holding, and Mitch Green indicated that he was boxing. Another big left hook, a running left right. hook by Mike Tyson. You see what's happening, Barry, when uh, Green moves backwards, he's only giving momentum to, the, to Tyson, because Tyson's going straight ahead. He's coming straight ahead. Tyson not, he's not breathing hard, so that tells you that he's not concerned about going the distance, going well, 10 rounds. In fact, we talked to him about that. He's talking, Tyson's talking to Mitch now. And the Tillis fight, he fought hard for about five rounds, and then he seemed to coast a little bit. Look at what he's doing now, Barry. Uh, Tyson. He started to uh, really become very loose with his head. Slip punches. Big right hand. Big, and that wobble, Mitch Green, for a second there. The reason you tie a fighter up is to at least clear your head or either to um, to throw off his timing. Well, just how hard Mike Tyson hits can be learned in talking to some of the people he fought. Look at the look at here, look at here. Just right laughing at him. And Green seems to me, Ray, to be doing all the wrong things. That's very good body movement by Mike Tyson. I'm impressed with that. And he's having fun. He's smiling now at Miss Green. And see, those punches that was missed by Miss Green makes your arm work. And see, Miss Green is not getting any type of respect from Mike Tyson, mainly because he's not making a fist when he throws his punches. Good left hook. Another, another big left oh, hook. Oh, and oh. even more impressive because it was he doubled up on it. He missed with the first one. You know the way that Tyson is walking in. Moving that head. He's doing the right thing. Staying close to his man. No breathing room. No punching room. Good, beautiful uppercut. Left hook, right uppercut. I like this here. Inside. What Tyson is doing to uh, Miss Green. I started to say about some of his opponents and what they say. Fought a guy named Eddie Richardson. They asked him, have you ever been hit so hard? He said, yeah, about a year ago I was hit by a truck. Very good. It's a lot of blood from Miss Green's mouth. You got to be first. This is six round. He's getting tired. You got to throw punch first. Stay busy on him. That's how you Throw combination blood. One, two, three. Punch and combination. Come on, man. Punching combination blood. One, two. Yeah, I mean, bro, stay busy on this guy. If you stay busy on this Punching combination. Come on, man. Blood. Punching combination. There's Mrs. Green. Come on, one, two, three. You understand? Be first. Don't wait on the man. You understand what I'm really saying? Really nice get, get woman. Get it off. Be first. That's why I get you sick of him. Get him. You got to punch. Man, you got to punch. Stay busy on him, blood. Pull off him. Blood. Don't wait, man. Where's my feet? Put your chin down on your hand a little bit. Name is it, but you gotta come right back. You gotta answer that. Don't let these judges let him steal the round. You understand? You won the round, you win it every round. Look around those upper punches. Make sure you keep punching. And Green lands those 
I don't know, slaps on Tyson. It's it's almost like a washerwoman slapping some clothes on a rock. It's just nothing happens. Michigan will have to do more than just slap because he has to stop that momentum of Tyson. Come on, break. Come on, break. That's what Tyson said about his own style. He says like water on a rock, but if it drips long enough, it's going through the rock. Look, you notice the jab, the powerful jab of Tyson. It knocks the head back. Wishful thinking in Mitch Green's corner, too. They were telling him that Tyson's getting tired. I don't see that. I doubt that very seriously. Tyson's just as strong as he was in the very first round. He's maintained his pace. He's thrown a great deal of punches. Made to the midsection. He's landed with a, a lot of good left hooks, solid left hooks. One thing you have to give to uh, Mitch Green, he has a durable chin. He's taking some tremendous shots, body and head shots, from Mike Tyson. Green is able to land one one jab, and all of a sudden Tyson's right there in his chest. Another big left hook. Just to conclude the thought that we started in the last round about Tyson's going 10 rounds, he said after he finished the Tillis fight, he did pace himself, and what a right hand. There is such frustration in the face of Mitch Green. But every time he throws a punch and it misses, it seems to me that uh, he wants to just walk away. Let it go, let it go, let it go. Come on, let it go, let it go, let it go. To conclude that, he said when it was over, he felt he could go five more rounds. He's conditioned. All right. You notice that when he goes to the body, he doesn't throw one punch. He throws two, three, four shots. I like the fact that Tyson used what he has. I mean, he has power, he has speed, has a good chin, and a huge net. I mean, he is so tenacious. He's not letting up. Keeping those hands high. Come on, let it go, let it go. Come on, break. Come on, step back. Come on, step back. Ha having gone to 10 rounds against Tillis, right, you could see a different fighter here as we head into the last five rounds of this one. It's only a reassurance that he's capable of going 10 rounds at full speed. Look at here. You can tell that he is not concerned about going the distance, uh, throwing those shots combination to the body and he is on, he's done this on, on, from, from the very first round and not breathing look at him he's not breathing at all And the car. Well, well, you got a shutout going here. Absolutely, Larry. Dwight uh, Gooden. <laughs> Mike Tyson is just awesome. Uh, they took the fourth round away from Miss Green, but it didn't mean anything. Tyson's all over him, and he's throwing those tremendous left hooks. He's all over Green. It's all Tyson. It will be interesting to see what he does from here on out. Because it was from this seventh round on against Tillis that he sort of coasted. And he finished with about a third of a tank of gas, we're talking about Tyson. So let's see if he uses up that gas here. This is round number seven. I like the tactics of Mike Tyson. He's uh, not wasting any energy. Um, he's moving forward, staying aggressive, getting inside, and you have to watch the beauty of those little short shots. They've been working so effectively. Now we see a, a couple of left jabs thrown by Mike Tyson. What is what? There, there again, Mitch Green is throwing his punches, not doing any damage. Now they're almost just for effect. The free hand again of Mike Tyson normally goes to the body. Is this a good test you feel for Tyson? It's a, every fight for Tyson is a good fight, a good test. Uh, you got guys that, uh, especially like a Mitch Green or Quick Tillis, guys who. Because headboys will be taller. The average headboy is around six feet. And he's able to cut the ring off and become more technical in the ring. 
chopping right hand did get in, but again with absolutely no damage. No, it's not wrestling. Come on. Come on, let it go. It's not wrestling. Boxing. I mean, Tyson, they're good uppercut. What an uppercut. Just straighten Mitch Green right up. If you look at Tyson, I mean, as far as perspiration, it seems as though he's working effortlessly. I mean, it's, he's taking his time and just having fun. It's like chopping a tree down. He's going to the body and uh, weak, weaken the foundation as he comes to the head. All that um, Mitch has been doing, Mitch Green has been doing, was basically retreating. He has to take the stand eventually. Another couple body shots. There it is, free hand for Mike Tyson. Yeah, using that much more than he did in his last go with Tillis. I mean, Tyson is actually concentrating. He's looking for his opening. And he's making that opening happen by working that body. Look at the uppercut. And he's setting, his, he's setting Mitch Green up for the uppercut. He throws his left jab. Green goes down, and up comes the right uppercut. A lot of booze from the fans, mainly because that Mitch Green is doing a lot of holding. And less fighting. Green is taking a pretty good beating. Taking a lot of punches, and a lot of hard punches. Tyson's is not that impressed with Mitch Green. Every time you try to jab, you don't miss this guy. You understand me? You don't miss him. Just sit around and concentrate on the jab. Bam, box him, box him, get some. Come, yeah. come on, come on. Come out with three or four punches, blood, like you do on the bag. Bam, bam, bam. You understand? Get the jab out there and come, come on, combination come on. behind the jab. What you want? You understand? Don't let him get inside and hit him with upper cups. Keep him outside. You well, got to get in right. Give him some good shots, okay? Take it out. Come on, baby. Go ahead, man. The crowd wants magic. And I think that Tyson would like to give them some magic. But his opponent isn't cooperating at the moment. He's not acting like a girl who's letting him pull rabbits out of his hat. He's fighting with a lot of neighborhood pride, and he wants to hang in there as long as he can. Now break, come on, come on. Mitch Green told, told well, him to, uh, man, to throw two or three jails like, it, like he uh, does in a bag, but the bag doesn't hit back. Tyson hits back. Tyson is not breathing hard. This is the eighth round. It's been up tempo for Mike Tyson right from the opening belt. Actually, a little bit slower this round than he has been. A little bit more leaning going on in this well, round. He, he would throw Tyson would throw more punches if uh, Green didn't tie him up. That was a good. Attempt with that right hand for Tyson. And now we see uh, Mitch Green. He landed with a good uppercut there. Green just trying to tie Tyson up. And a couple of good shots by Mitch Green. His best rally of the fight right here. Look here. No. He's caught Tyson four or five times. And Tyson, for the first time, seems a little bit puzzled. Well, he's smiling. Tyson is smiling. But see, Green has those fast hands. Good body shot by Mitch Green. Now we're seeing a different Mitch Green. But he has to be very careful of exchanging punch for punch and side with Tyson. Watch your head. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Watch your head. Watch your head. There was There's a right hand. A huge right hand by Mike Tyson. Come on, go, right. It's just even sitting 30 feet away like we are makes you wince. Oh, well, you, can, you, can, you can feel the impact well, break, of his punch. See, also, Mitch Green is not tying his man up properly. He's holding behind the head, 
which he allows those shots like that to land. When you tie a man up, you hold the grab around his arm. That was another good shot to the ribs by Tyson. Tyson said one time, he said, I understand anatomy. Here again. Oh, what a left hand. And this is going to happen all the time because, again, you see the way that Mitch Green has his hand behind the head of Tyson. Watch Tyson should go to the body here. See the body shots. Yeah, but close, a little close. You got to throw a little bit more. You got to throw more. You understand? A bit more, Mike. Come on. You let him have a big round. You understand? He had nothing left there for that. Kid. You don't miss him with any of them. Take a deep breath and let us go. Come on, baby. Deep breath. Take another one. Get right on the stage this round. Ninth round, baby. It's the ninth round. You understand? Yes. Now, he made that round close enough to steal. <laughs> when you get that one to him. Yeah, he come right out there. Him. Says, that was a first. Oh, I don't want to give it to him. You get out there well, and take Kevin it Kevin Rooney right is in there, there and just back. jabbering He's away 100 miles a minute. Yeah. Mike Tyson leaned over and just Punch kissed him. him. <laughs> he hit him right, right hand hook over there, but you didn't get the size of the left. Where's the left hook? Right there, right there, right there, right there, right there, Clean it up, oh, you got a flood there, guys. This is an awfully good fight for Mike Tyson. It indicates that his management wants to get him tested. They want to get him into a position not where he's merely going to be maneuvered into a title fight, to fight a title fight, hey, hey, hey. but that somewhere down the road he will have had the training to win a title fight. Tyson draws a warning for headbutt. Mitch Green has to keep those hands up, which if he moves to the left or moves to the right, mainly because Tyson, he throws a looping right hand or a left hook. One would have the feeling that Mitch Green will not be out boogieing Come on, let go, let go. Break. Come on, No, those Come on. body Come on. shots will stop him from doing the uh, Pee Wee Herman. Stop him from doing the waltz. Tyson is using, you know what, what I feel, Barry, he's using what he has, I mean, he's not what you consider uh, flashy and what have you, and um, he's just taking advantage of every opportunity. He fights his man the way his opponent lets him fight him, inside, which is a big mistake that Mitch Green is making. Tyson's arms are short, so he has a tendency to loop his punches. Some are somewhat telegraphed, but because he has speed behind his punches, he's able to get away with it. Continuing to bang away at the body with a free hand. That uppercut was short. Mitch Green is not making this fight easy for Tyson either because he's he's steady tying him up. He's holding him. Let it go, let it go. I think the way you critique um, Tyson's performance is the fact that he he's remained composed. Watch it, watch it, watch it. Normally this type of fight frustrates the fighter. When the guy's holding you and complaining and what have you. Tyson's corner wanted him to punch a little bit more. He hasn't really punched a lot more in this ninth round. It, well, again, it's difficult to punch a man who's tying you up and holding. Let's see here. Come on, let it go, let it go. For Mitch Green, it's, it's pretty much survival. I've seen a different Mitch Green. He fought Purcell Davis in Atlanta and was a more determined and a more of a, a boxer. Come on, come on. Come on. Come Here on. he's basically just trying to survive. Come on, I break, man. That seems to be something that runs through all of Mike Tyson's yo, yo. opponents, on. that they all are come in good. there to survive. I'm not sure that could be said about I don't know right. if Mike Tyson is living up to your you expectations, but I'd remind you that Joe Lewis went the distance 
three times in his first 20 fights. Joe Frazier a couple of times. Rocky Marciano a couple of times in his first 21 fights. Some opponents just don't cooperate. <laughs> Harold? Larry, uh, I just don't think that Mitchell Green's flurries are doing enough to offset Tyson's power punching. Tyson's landing too many clean, effective shots. You might stop him, blood. Go punch him. Go to punch him. You understand? Punch with both hands, blood. Step to him. Don't wait on him. Step to him. Step to him, blood. He's going to punch like that. I'm curious here, Ray, whether Tyson will be satisfied to go out winning or does he want to go out closing the show in a sensational style? Well, the way he's geared up now, he wants to go out in style. Let's go. You want to see a very aggressive Mike Tyson as well. Tyson was ready to go. Luis Rivera said, shake hands before we get going. This is the last round. Tyson wants to go to work, but uh, Green here doesn't want to fight, it appears to me. Green's corner telling him to step in to Mike Tyson. I don't want to rush you. This is a bad performance for Miss Green. And uh, he has some grievances with Don King about not getting the type of money that he wants. But the fact is, he has to screw himself here. And the mouthpiece goes again. He has to prove he deserves the money. Green trying to go to the body. Tyson leaning on him now a little bit. What's going to happen um, as um, Tyson gets further and further into his career? He's going to figure out a better way to approach fights like this. Those sets of the body, I love those body shots. They really do a number on a tall opponent. It slows him down and uh, cuts his went off, especially if you have the power. But as I was saying earlier, Barry, the fact that this, these type of fights is good for a Mike Tyson because he's going to learn how to approach tall opponents more tactically. He's going to learn how to cut the ring off and uh, even score more effective punches. Moving that head very well, Tyson. Took a couple of shots, but still... The only problem I see with, uh, excuse me, Barry, the only problem I see with Tyson is the fact he comes in sometimes with those hands down a little too low because if you meet, meet a good puncher, the speed uh, could prove be disastrous. But now he's he's doing he's doing a job. Well, remember, he knocked out his first 19 opponents, went the distance with Tillis, and now likely will go the distance with Mitch Blood Green. The crowd not real thrilled with the goings-on here. The crowd come here to see a fight, boxer puncher, and um, it's been uh, pretty much of a dance for Mitch Green. I'm sure Mitch Green is going to be disappointed uh, in this performance. And we come to just about the end of it here. Another day in the classroom, big left hand to end things. So Mike Tyson has gone 10 rounds for the second time in less than a month. When you say, my good friends, you know, it's very hot here in the city of Maine. These senior men really work. Now, come on. One more time. Mitch Blood Green, perhaps not being quite as accommodating to Mike Tyson as Tyson and some of the fans here would have liked. Well, I think it was a good performance for Mike Tyson. I'm sure a lot of people would disagree, mainly because what you have to look at, the fact that he went 10, 10 good hard rounds, with a fighter that uh, was not you know, cooperating. Take a look at the punch that, as you can see, he was pretty effective with his punches, and there weren't a lot of jabs in there. He threw a, a great deal of punches, more so to the body. Uh, Tyson del delivered a great deal of body shots to Mitch Green. Green didn't fight at all to me. Did a lot of holding on and not effective. 
scoring with six out of ten of his punches, and that's pretty high percentage for a guy who really is a power puncher like Mike Tyson, I would think, Ray. Well, Tyson is a slugger. He's the puncher, and uh, he worked in a, a very good way. He stayed close to Mitch Green. Green did not do anything but a couple of... Uh, of left jabs. Is it, a, is it a detriment you feel to a fighter where the image of Mike Tyson is he's going to knock everybody out who he gets in there with? Now he's gone the distance on two successive fights. Is it a detriment just to kind of build that kind of expectancy in the public? Well, he just has to do what he does best, and that's work the body like he did. People are going to uh, be so opinionated anyway. Let's take a look then at Harold Letterman's card. And, Harold, you pitched a shutout here. Well, well Barry, as I see it, you know, in the eyes of this judge, you can't get points for holding, uh, for taking a good shot on a jaw. And that's basically what Mitchell Green did. He held. Louis Rivera took one round away, warned him a hundred times. But Green held and held and held. The closest I thought Green got was the tenth round. But even that, Tyson won. You know, I mean, there's the old thing of Styles make fights, and perhaps in this case, Styles unmade this fight, if you will. Mitch Green really wasn't willing to be the cooperative opponent that the crowd and Mike Tyson perhaps would have liked. Let's go up to the ring announcer now, Ed Darian, for the official decision. Ed? Ladies and gentlemen, from Madison Square Garden, we have a unanimous decision. And a scoring by rounds as follows. Judge George DeGabriel observed the fight 8-2. Judge Pat Dolan watched it at 9-1. And Judge Georgie Colon observed the fight 9-1. For the winner, for his 21st straight win in his many fights, Mike Tyson.